heard a lot of people say they don't understand why gun control is explicitly racist, so let's talk about it. Fun fact, except specifically not fun. The first pieces of gun control in the United States were bans on slaves being in possessions of firearms. The second were bans on former slaves owning firearms. The language may have shifted because dog whistling, the act of shifting your language in such a way that a, you are using less openly hateful vocabulary and more subtly racist terminology in order to both galvanize for your cause and be able to pretend like your cause isn't rooted in hate, is a lot easier to sell than spreading rampant hate. But the idea behind gun control has stayed. It's about restricting access to tools from the people who need it most. Gun control has always been tied to a racist, classist, let's take the guns away from those people mentality. And you can't separate it from that. Before we go any further, I should point out that I am, well, white as fuck. And while I am confident in what I am saying, and part of my confidence comes from being raised Jewish and being educated by Holocaust survivors who very readily drilled into me the importance of not disarming, part of that confidence does come from the work of more intelligent, more capable people of color who come before me. So in that spirit, before I go any further, I'm going to give you some resources where you can get this information from somebody who isn't, well, neon white. This nonviolent stuff will get you killed is a great start. It's written by Charles E. Cobb Jr. and it's a fantastic explanation over the important role that guns have had in maintaining civil rights. Or We Will Shoot Back by Kenya Yamaha, which shows a very clear series of examples in history where civil rights was only possible when defense wasn't a thing we left to the police. The first pieces of gun control in the United States were the slave codes, which prohibited the possession of firearms by slaves. That legislation got rewritten into the Black Codes, which banned former slaves from owning guns. The entire idea of it, at the start, was to prevent people who had been tortured and treated as property from getting guns and ideas. That was, thankfully, destroyed by the Civil Rights Act, which made separating people by race and legislating them differently illegal. So what did they do? They made it so you had to get a license and pay a tax in order to be able to own a firearm. And they claimed this was so that they could track who was buying guns, but it also made it prohibitively expensive to own a gun if you were, you know, robbed of the ch opportunity of having intergenerational wealth because people in your recent history had literally been slaves. There was also a pre change in the presentation behind gun control. Suddenly it wasn't keep guns from black people. It was let the police decide who gets to carry guns. Apparently they should be able to choose by holy writ whether or not you're allowed to defend yourself. This skip past this and this and all of these and this fucking FBI report and this FBI report. Fuck. This was expressly a way for the KKK and other hateful groups to strip black activists of weapons and arms and any ability to defend themselves before their homes and lives were destroyed. The idea of charging people money in order to be able to allow to defend themselves or requiring a background check or in any way allowing the police to decide whether or not you are allowed to have the ability to defend yourself will always result in the poorest and the most in need of defense among us requiring the police to like them and agree with them for their basic safety. It requires the weakest of us to go to heal to the state in order to survive. It's dehumanizing and degrading to make anybody beholden to the state for their own basic safety, particularly when the thing that they need defending from is directly tied into the state system. In California for years they tried to get an assault weapons ban passed, but for the longest time they couldn't actually get people to agree to it. The problem was you don't get to just say anybody who has a gun is clearly a lunatic or a criminal because there have been so many people who have come home from war and brought weapons with them, in some cases even carrying those weapons on a daily basis now, that are just normal people. Which war? Yes. 
Specifically in this case, everybody's grandpappy had just come home from World War II or Korea with a variety of weapons. But even before that, it had been a tradition passed down since the revolution. See, during war, you're issued a gun. At the end of the war, that gun is turned back in. Asterisk. But combat is, well, technically defined as sketchy as fuck. Particularly during World War II, which kind of became America Loots Europe, but somehow it's ethical edition, it was not uncommon for you to either grab a gun off of a killed Nazi, or to grab, uh, in an emergency, a uh, backup weapon off of a fallen soldier in order to have additional firepower. Where did you get the machine gun over the counter? Oh, Grandpapa killed some Nazis and brought their machine gun back, isn't it cute? Not to mention it wasn't uncommon, particularly during World War II, for older technology weapons to be given to soldiers as a first option if they were going to be sold to the general public anyway. Particularly if you were issued something, say, bolt action, and they were no longer really going to be issuing large numbers of those post-World War II. Also, some officers serving with distinction, particularly in World War II in Korea, would be given their M1911 by their superior officers as a gift when they were discharged, as a reward for distinguished service. So telling people guns equals mass murderer didn't really make sense. You know, Uncle Rick's got that M1911 he got from dragging his ass all over Europe, kicking Nazis' ass, and Bobby got that SKS from when he went to South Korea and kept them from joining the giant game of Don't Starve Together where everybody loses that was North Korea. And they're, they brought those weapons home and they're lovely people. Sure, Bobby occasionally farts and blames it on his truck, but that's just bad humor. You can't really blame a guy for that. And sure, Uncle Ricky's occasionally a little bit racist, but... Actually, no, go talk to Uncle Ricky. Like, just pause the video real quick and go talk to Uncle Ricky, just before some poor soul has to. Pause the video, I'll wait. Then these pictures dropped nationwide, but more importantly, across the suburbs of California. The Black Panthers were arming themselves to protect food drives, activism groups, church meetings, anything that was under threat of firebombing. I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's a lot harder to lynch somebody with a nine millimeter in the brain pan or in this case, a 30 caliber. We'll actually get back to that in a second. And let's be clear, I mean that literally. They faced fire bombings, direct sh drive-by shooting style executions, as well as actual literal lynchings. Not to mention cases like the race riots, where there were entire groups of people brought into black neighborhoods given sometimes government permission to beat and kill black people, often with government approval. White people see those pictures though, and suddenly racists see an opportunity again. And the language starts shifting even harder. Suddenly, it's not about keeping guns away from black people. It's about keeping guns out of the hands of criminals. When bank robberies were white people getting armed to the teeth for smash and grab jobs, we literally had mail order machine guns. You could get your Tommy gun from an ad in the newspaper. They would just ship it to your home, fully automatic. The Machine Gun Act didn't come until the 1960s, at which point it was absolutely not about getting those bank robberies to stop, we were Decades past that. But that dies down and suddenly, black people are using the same tools to stop a group of hateful white people from slaughtering them. And oh, we have to get those guns out of those hands of the criminals. Suddenly, thugs with guns is the language used. And California passes the assault weapons ban. California's assault weapons ban doesn't make sense on a lot of levels. But one of the ones that you can very cleanly point to and show how racist this really was is that 30 cal bullet I was mentioning just a few minutes ago. The M1 carbine is explicitly banned in the California assault weapons ban, which doesn't really make sense. There's a lot of stuff chambered in much, much more violent rounds that aren't explicitly banned by that. However, this mid-tier, frankly, decent home defense weapon was frequently being used by the Black Panthers. It's the gun from that photo and that photo and that one that I'm sure you've seen before. If you're white, if you're cis, if you're hetero, and if you in any way think that people don't need guns to protect themselves and their communities, and you think people can just trust the police to keep them safe, I'd ask you why you're so comfortable siding with hate. Because like it or not, there are groups of people that agree with you about gun control, but their reasoning is they wanna kill Black Lives Matter activists. 
They want to scare black people, and more specifically black activists, everywhere. And they think you agree with them. Or at bare minimum, they're really happy you're giving them the tools to spread their hate further. And perhaps more importantly, you need to start focusing on the language that's being pushed around gun control, because you'll start to notice a lot of it is frequently dog-whistling racism. A lot of it is mentioning criminals and thugs. It's already illegal for criminals to have guns. There is no gun control that will add to that that's already heavily illegal. This is not about keeping guns out of criminals' hands. When you make options for stripping guns legally, you generate a black market. You don't generate a gunless society. The only reason they push it that way is because it allows them to push racist policies without seeming racist. Because they get well-meaning people agreeing with them, not realizing the harm and the hate that they're spreading. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you really enjoyed what you saw. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you didn't like it, take a sledgehammer and smash your computer and it will never show you anything like this again. If you want to support me, you can follow me on Patreon. This content releases a day early on there and I'm going to be doing some stuff exclusive to there as well. Some live stream designing and building a gun type stuff. So thank you so much for tuning in and remember, moral doesn't mean legal and Stonewall was a riot. Peace.